Japan's nuclear accident forced thousands of people to flee their homes and live elsewhere. The country's leaders want to make it possible for them to go back. To do that, they're going to reclassify some areas in the evacuation zone around Fukushima Daiichi. Places with relatively low radiation will be redesignated as preparation zones so residents can return home as soon as possible. The evacuation zone around Fukushima Daiichi is 20 kilometers. Residents left the area in mid-March. The town of Naraha is the first among 11 municipalities within the no-go zone to get a cleanup. Workers are focusing on roads and public facilities that are vital for daily life. They're using power washers to decontaminate what they can. They say this can reduce radioactivity by about 80%. In the town of Tomioka, workers checked radiation levels along a closed section of the Jobang Expressway ahead of decontamination operations. We should face the fact that the procedure will be slow, but we have to speed things up so troubled residents can return home as soon as possible. But it is feared any homecoming is still a long way off. Decontaminating private homes may even take until this summer to start. The job requires the permission of each homeowner, and there are ongoing challenges restoring water and electricity as many lifelines remain seriously damaged from the earthquake and tsunami. Japan's leaders held a series of emergency meetings on March 11, 2011, soon after the earthquake and tsunami hit the northeast. Then, when things went wrong at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, this task force discussed the possibility of a worst-case scenario reactor meltdowns. But details of their talks show they put off an evacuation order. The country's nuclear watchdog has shed light on the meetings by piecing together an inside account. The earthquake and tsunami knocked out external power and disabled the plant's backup generators on March 11th. Prime Minister Naoto Kan declared a state of emergency at the plant and presided over the first meeting of the task force that evening. The government recently revealed no one took minutes of that or subsequent meetings. Public criticism prompted members of the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency to interview the individuals who were on the task force. And they studied the notes that they were taken and reconstructed the minutes. Their document shows an unidentified member of the task force spoke about a worst-case scenario. That person said meltdowns could occur if the core temperatures of the reactors were to rise after backup cooling batteries died in about eight hours. At that point, the government had yet to issue an evacuation order. The minutes also show another task force member said it might be necessary at some point to clear cities and towns within 10 kilometers of Fukushima Daiichi. The task force met for the third time on the afternoon of March 12. By then, the government had set up a 10-kilometer radius evacuation zone around the nuclear plant. Koichiro Gamba, who was national policy minister at the time, pointed out the possibility of meltdowns occurring at Fukushima Daiichi. He asked if the evacuation zones should be expanded. At 6.25 p.m. on March 12, a hydrogen explosion happened at Reactor 1. The government expanded the no-go area to 20 kilometers. The reconstructed minutes from the task force meetings offer no details on how decisions were made on crucial matters. For example, the review of evacuation zone. This, may, this makes it difficult to examine the government's decision-making process during the disaster. It's nearly a year since the devastating earthquake and tsunami in Japan. The country is still struggling to deal with millions of tons of debris. So local governments have joined hands to help dispose of it more quickly. 17 local governments outside the disaster area have agreed to accept debris for disposal, but they can't handle it all. Their top officials launched a project to encourage more local authorities to join the effort. I'm sorry the disposal of debris is going so slowly. Let's work together to produce results. The disaster last March left an estimated 22.5 million tons of debris. Officials at the Environment Ministry say only a little over 6% has been incinerated or buried. Some local governments are reluctant to accept debris because residents think it may have been contaminated by the nuclear accident.
to India now, where the government has revoked the visa of a Japanese woman scheduled to speak at a conference about nuclear energy. India is one of many emerging economies looking to nuclear power to meet its growing energy needs. The disaster at Fukushima Daiichi gave new purpose to the anti-nuclear movement in India. Environmental organization Greenpeace says it invited the 25-year-old woman from Fukushima city to India. She was due to speak at an event marking the anniversary of the nuclear disaster at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. The woman is active in a civic group trying to protect children from radiation exposure. The Indian embassy in Japan said earlier this month that the woman's visa had been revoked. In India, operation of a just-completed nuclear power plant had to be delayed amid public protests. India last month also deported a German man accused of taking part in anti-nuclear campaigns. The government seems to be increasingly nervous about the anti-nuclear movement as it tries to secure its energy supply.